All right. Today, we are changing camshaft bearings in an LS1 engine. Uh, this is not an uncommon scenario uh, for uh, any shop or person, really. Uh, uh, we're changing an engine in a car. Uh, the Corvette has a blown engine, and our customer has elected to supply a used engine and wants to change his hot cam from the blown up motor because the camshaft is okay and then put it in the used motor he got before we put it in the car in a economical way, if possible. Uh, we can do that because we have these tools, these nice little T-handles I can't pull out right now, but with these T-handles inserted into these uh, oil galleries, we can lock all the lifters up so that we can pull the camshaft out without having to remove the cylinder heads. Uh, to make this happen, the engine obviously needs to be out of the car. The oil pan needs to be off along with the oil pickup, the windage tray, uh, the front and rear covers, and the oil pump and time and chain and then the camshaft come out. Um, on most of the LS engines or truck engines that I've been in used, when the camshaft comes out, if you look at the camshaft bearings, they take their wear pretty quick. And uh, typically any LS engine, specifically a truck engine, uh, like your 5.3s, your 6.0s that have had the cam, that, that have 100,000 miles or more on them, if you're putting a cam in them, you, you should be changing the bearings along with it. If you use worn bearings, they, uh, they just wear on the bottom and the camshaft digs its way down to China. And what ends up happening is you get relaxed uh, preload on the rockers and you just get a, a, a noisy valve train. And that's a terrible thing to have when you just install the camshaft, right? So uh, it's always a good idea to uh, install a fresh set of bearings when you're doing uh, a camshaft, especially on the LS engines. Uh, because we're installing a Saturday night special camshaft, it's a stage three hot cam. We got these special bearings. These are Durabond CHP 10T. They're a Teflon coating, so they're supposed to be very resilient and they're really cool to look at. They, uh, they look like a frying pan on the inside. That's a really cool coating they got on them. The LS engine uh, camshaft bearings have different positions. Uh, they're specific. We have to have the boat covers off because the way this works is uh, there's five bearings. The one in the center has the smallest OD. This way we can take the bearing, put it on the tool and drive it through the first two and into the center. And then the two in the middle between the center and the outside are a little bit bigger and then the two on the outside are the biggest. So there's no way to change all five without coming at the back for two and then the front for two and then you can change the middle one from wherever you want. Uh, so that's pretty much what we're doing here today. We're, uh, we have a special tool for doing this. This is our camshaft tool, our camshaft bearing tool. This is an awesome tool. I'd like to say that that tool has paid for itself many times over, but the reality is, is this tool was gifted to me. I didn't even pay for this tool. I, uh, I love this tool. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and easy to use. When we get past the first, the second, and the third bearing, this cone will be used to help hold the shaft straight. It'll just go in the first, but for now, we're only going to use just this piece. And we just knock it forward. Until it comes out. This is the cam bearing in position number one, and here is the wear that it takes. See how that is, uh, there's still some color on it, but there is no mistaking where that is worn down. Um, I want to see something really terrible. Here are the bearings that came out of the, uh, the old LS1. There was, uh, yeah. And, Give you a better shot of the. Uh... Here's up close to the tough one. I don't know if that's focusing in well. 
These are more expensive and they're harder to get, but uh, you gotta look for them. But they should be a lot more resilient with the harder spring pressure that the stage three cam is using. Now we're not just gonna press one out and then press one in. We're gonna knock them all out before we start knocking any in. I'm gonna go right into the second one. If we wanted to, we could slide this up like that and this will keep it all perfectly straight. Other times, we just roll the engine. Yeah. Rolling the engine is nice and easy because there's no uh, compression. There's no valve. There's one. And here is all five. Yes. Uh, every single one of them is spanked. Every, all of them. We won't put these back together. Can you imagine spending all that money on a camshaft kit? You get all new springs, you get everything, and you're going to put it on these bearings? Can you imagine? And that's what people do. Uh, let me change my gloves. Okay. There's a bore in the block at each cam bearing, and there's two holes in each cam bearing. Let me get my phone. holes in each cam bearing one two but there's only one drill hole in the block right here in the same place on all of them and uh, the hole in the block is drilled at an angle with the circular hole in such a way that it's elongated so you have a little wind margin of error where you can have the cam bearing and it'll still line up and work but it is really important that that hole is lined up 
with the feed hole and a block. Or, uh, you know, you'll, you'll start the bearing for oil right out of the gate. And it won't go far. I like to uh, knock my bearings in just gently and then pull the tool back out as early as I can and get a flashlight in there and make sure that I'm going that, 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 that I'm going right. Uh, we're gonna start with number three. Like I said, number three has uh, the smallest ID, so it'll push right through here without much resistance. It'll push right through the middle one without much resistance, but it'll lock in to the last one. Outside one, it's real easy to hold this up like right there and say, Oh, we're lined up, this or that. But uh, one more, and we're going in three journals before we press it in. Not in all ways, just barely started. Now I get the flashlight. And we just very carefully make sure our holes are lined up. Fucking perfect. And we gotta sink it to a very specific depth. There's uh, nothing worse, nothing worse than overshooting your target, right? We can go a bit more than that. 
the middle one is always the hardest to do. It's, uh, it's hard to see. I, mean, I guess if we have this upside down, it'd be a little bit easier, but you can't really get to it with this on an engine stand because it's covering the back too. So. I'm going to go in just a touch more. But not much, just a touch. That's all we got. Yes. I'm happy with that. Alright. Uh, so that was position three. This is position two. The two holes that are drilled are closer to each other. Because uh, all the weight is pushing down on the cam, I like to put it so the two holes are closer to the top than the bottom. And when we clock this one to the side, this one is up high and it leaves all solid material for the whole bottom. I don't know if that actually makes a damn bit of difference, but that's what I like to do. It's worth checking and rechecking and rechecking to make sure you're going in right because once they've been pressed, if you press them out and press them back in, honestly, it's not going to have the same tension on it, right? So, rather than having to go and, and, and take the risk of, some, of a bearing spinning on you or having to keep rebinding parts, it's just a lot better just to take some extra time while you're doing it. And just keep checking all along the way. Just go in a little bit. Back a little bit more. I'll do cylinder four, or I'm sorry, position number four. It's the same thing as two. It's between the middle of the block and the outside, but it's on the back. This one has to go in from behind. But it's the same thing. I, uh, the two holes are closer on one side. I'll, the hole that feeds the, the bearing is on this side of the block, so I'll make it so that this one is pointing almost straight up instead of down. We'll uh, get them started.
So I've never really done this with the uh, camshaft sensor in, but uh, apparently the camshaft sensor sticks down just a little bit below the bore. So uh, it doesn't hurt or anything, but it makes it a little bit strange going in. It makes it so you gotta walk it up and then down and get it around. So uh, it's a good idea to remove the camshaft sensor. Now that I'm back here, I'll do the number five position, which is painfully easy. Really easy. And the last one, the number one position. I ordered these off of Summit Racing, by the way. They had them in stock, but they only showed that they had two of them left in stock, so that's that. All right. I just want to make sure the hole is going to line up. I want to shoot the dead center of the hole that we got the most room to go over down. There. And just drive bearing. Shaft bearings are in. Now, well, I got you here on the video. There's one last thing we want to do, aside from the cam bearings. The old motor had a barbell in it. Uh, because of the way that the oil galleries are bored, um, these are the two oil galleries that uh, feed the, about the, the lifters and the valve train. This is the main oil gallery coming right off the, uh, off the oil pump. Uh, the pickup goes down in the pan and the pump feeds right into this hole. Pumps straight back up this side of the block where it goes down to the oil filter. And the way they just, the way they mill the block when they make it, they just line bore this shit all the way through the block bolt 
and right out the other side. And then they put a little uh, a plastic spacer in it, they call a barbell, that's to block the passage on the back and force the oil to go up to uh, another bore to come up to the top of the bore. Uh, some people believe that these fail. I don't know if they do or not, but I, I haven't seen any actually fail myself, but I know as soon as I say that, some wise ass is gonna come up and talk about the time he fucking had one actually let go on. Uh, this is the barbell, right here. Right here. And uh, we have a fun way of getting them out. And we get a screw and a screwdriver. And we're that bad here. This is the barbell from the factory. This is what was in a customer's old motor, and this is the difference. This is the plastic barbell, and this is the one the customer that I pulled out of the customer's old LS1 motor that failed. Uh, these are aluminum. It's not uncommon when you get them, they're a little bit bigger than the bore size, so sometimes you gotta grind on them to make them go in, in smooth like this one has had done. And that's all they are. I, I've never actually seen one of these plastic ones fail. I feel like they're just a, a money grab from uh, parts vendors, but we all have our own things. This one just presses right in. It's got a nice machine uh, thread hole on it to put a six millimeter bolt just for pulling this out, but, so you don't have to drill a hole and, and do all that craziness we just did with that. And this one here needs to be uh, hung down before it works well, of course. You don't want to hammer them in because if you hammer it in, It'll, uh, it might it might bend and break and not go in all the way. Uh, I'll stop this video now. This video was only about installing the cam bearings and that part of the job is done. From here, I will use, uh, oh, where did I put it? Well, I don't know where I put it, but I have a special tool for uh, putting on the LS rockers, just for uh, just for taking each rocker off without uh, having to head off the car. One last thing that we have to do after we uh, install the barbell and we get all our covers back on, as the uh, Stage Three cam goes in. We're, uh, we're gonna install the push rods that went along with the stage three cam and uh, make sure we, uh, we're not tagging anything as we roll, but we also have to change the valve springs to the stage three. And uh, for that, we'll, you will have, uh, we'll come at it with compressed air and, uh, and this tool that I thought I had, but I don't know where it is right now. Oh well, I'll find it later. That's all for this video. That's how you install camshaft bearings in an LS1 engine. And uh, we did it without pulling the heads. Second shift performance. <laughs>